Let's imagine a university that awarded degrees based on more than just grades. A university that was well respected academically and was sought after by different employers, but a university that did more than just sum the number of math credits with the number of English credits you'd earn to, achieve, to determine whether or not you were worthy of a particular degree. And sure, here at the University of Waterloo and countless other institutions around the world, we have this idea of cooperative education where real world job experience and internships can, if you're in the right program, impact whether or not you achieve a particular degree. But what if there was more than that? What if there existed a university where a significant amount of your, de your, significant amount of your degree requirements were based on the activities and initiatives you were able to lead outside the classroom? Talking about a university where the countless hours you spent leading a particular student group or a student team counted towards your degree, or the hours you spent turning that side project into a sustainable business counted, rather than making you question whether or not you even needed that degree in the first place. A university that encouraged you to stay up all night and participate in a hackathon because it realized the value you would get from that weekend was greater than that of a semester's worth of computer science classes but also a university that acknowledged the insane amount of skills learned and demonstrated by the organizers of that hackathon and let that initiative contribute towards their degree. To be clear, I'm talking about a university where the hours you spent and the content that you learned in the classroom wasn't the only thing that impacted whether, you're not, whether or not you earned that degree. But as we think about this type of university, we have to ask ourselves, why? Why would a university, fundamentally an academic institution, adopt such a model where such a significant portion of your degree requirements weren't based on things you were being taught in the classroom? Instead, the content you'd be assessed on would be things and how effectively you were able to lead these different initiatives and activities that occurred outside the classroom. To be clear, what I'm saying is, the content you'd be tested on to determine whether or not you earn that degree wouldn't be the things that you'd maybe learned, but more likely memorized and then regurgitated onto an exam. If we call this our University 2.0, let's consider three possible aspects of what the student experience would look like and what a resulting graduate would look like. Number one, we'd still learn how to learn. To many, this is one of the most important parts of a university degree. Just having that university degree, it effectively says this person was able to succeed at something academically. Thus, they must be able to learn. They probably don't know everything, but when put in the right situation with the right resources, they're teachable. And through many of our classes and through our academics, we're taught incredible problem-solving skills and incredible ways of actually thinking about different problems. And this is very important. Through this model at our University 2.0, we've still got this idea of learning how to learn covered because we're not changing all the degree requirements. We're still going to have that traditional classes and those traditional lectures and those traditional exams. Like I said, this isn't all bad. We learn problem solving skills. We learn analytical skills. Heck, an argument could be made that the countless courses where I've memorized the multiple choice exam banks right before walking into the exam were really just practice when I need to memorize a talk like this one. Number two, graduates, will still be able to communicate their thoughts effectively. With a significant portion of degree requirements based on, not based on those traditional things like exams and assignments, students are going to need to figure out how they're best to communicate the value they're getting outside the classroom. Now, luckily, this really shouldn't be that hard. You see, if you're a student who's led a student team or led a student organization, you've probably already figured out how you're best to communicate. You probably already figured out that you can write really clean, clear, concise emails, but walk into a meeting without having kind of jotted down the notes that you want to say and your message isn't going to reach the people in the room. Or maybe instead of leading a student team, you started a company during school. Your company had limited R&D requirements and you were able to really focus on the sales and business development side of things. And through that, you have, you're, constantly, you're constantly required to manage the expectations of external stakeholders and customers, and in some cases, even investors. You see, through these experiences, you get to figure out how you're best to have tough conversations and how you're best 
to negotiate a deal that makes sense for all those involved and how you're best to communicate the value of your product to those potential customers. Not surprisingly, how we communicate is a very personal thing. The words I use, the tone of voice I use, the mannerisms I use to communicate a particular idea may not be the same that you should use to communicate that same idea. Thus, this really isn't something that we can easily capture in that traditional course. But it is something that graduates from our University 2.0 will be able to excel at. Number three, students continuously add value while practicing critical thinking. In a recent New York University study, 2,000 students from across 24 different US college and universities were followed throughout their university career. At the end of second year, 45% of them had shown no improvements in their ability to think critically. So what is critical thinking? Well, there's numerous definitions, but at the base, it's about being to interpret and understand and collect a set of different ideas relevant to one particular idea and interpret all of those other thoughts in such a way that you're able to draw connections between that one particular idea and the other seemingly disconnected ideas. Ultimately, arriving at a well-reasoned conclusion. Basically, it's about being aware of the situation you're in and using that information plus your existing, your existing knowledge to make a logical decision. Now, over at our University 2.0, we can assume that these activities and these initiatives that students are leading outside the classroom are going to be adding value back to that university or to society as a whole. But ultimately, for this to happen, the student or students leading those activities are going to be put into situations where they are forced to think critically. Take this TEDx conference as an example. No one told the organizers that we would be sitting here in the theater of the arts today. The arts today. There's countless other great venues throughout Waterloo Region that we could be at. But through their ability to think critically and their ability to assess and evaluate these different possibilities, it was determined that we would be here. In many ways, this is critical thinking. To recap, when thinking about our University 2.0, we can say that students will still learn how to learn. They'll graduate as effective communicators, and they'll be able to constantly add value while constantly practicing their critical thinking. Now, to be fair, we haven't remotely touched on the negatives or logistical hurdles associated with this type of model. But if we put those aside for a second and we think about it, this really isn't that crazy of an idea. In a 2014 study by the Chronicle of Higher Education, employers were asked to rank a set of attributes based on how important they were in new grads. A candidate's GPA made that list, but above it were things like volunteer experience, extracurricular involvement, and work experience during school. All things that would come to the forefront at our University 2.0. For some of you in the room, you're really hoping I end this talk with a, a link to an application form or a transfer form because this is the school that you want to attend. But for others in the room, this, this might not be where you'd excel and this might not be where you want to spend four to five years of your university life. That's okay. Just like at our University 2.0, students would have different ways of executing and different ways of showing the value they were earning, we as humans have different ways we can learn and grow as people. That's, I mean, this is effectively why we already have different types of higher ed institutions today. But what if you are like me, and you're here at the University of Waterloo, a more traditional university, and hoping you could have some of that University 2.0 experience? Or maybe you have no interest in being enrolled at our University 2.0, but some of what I've talked about is piqued your interest enough that you'd like to dive into some part of it a little bit further. How could you do that? Well, how could people like me stay sane over the course of this traditional university experience? Well, the good news is it's possible. Now, what's worked for me may not work for you, but I'd like to share with you three different ideas or three different hacks that have helped me have a university experience that loosely resembles that 
of our university 2.0. An experience where you're able to learn by doing and capture some of that value that exists outside the classroom while also capturing that value that's within it and within our textbooks. All right, so hack number one, ask why. I've used the word value a lot throughout this presentation, but what does value actually mean? To me, value is a way of measuring how much a particular impact of an action is worth. You see, by asking why, you can start to understand the different impacts that could come from different actions. And as you understand more and more impacts, you're able to evaluate them and compare them and eventually arrive at a logical decision. See, it's really not that complicated. The more you ask why, the more knowledgeable you become. And I'm not just talking about the things that you do, I'm talking about everything. Why did I pause before starting this sentence? Or why am I shifting back to the side of the room as I finish it? What value did that add to your experience right now? Or what value did that take away from it? By asking yourself these questions, you'll start to gain a new perspective and you'll ultimately end up in a significantly better position to make decisions. All right, hack number two. Stop comparing your grades. <laughs> how we perform academically is a very personal thing and how you value your grades is probably different than how I value my grades. But how we value our grades is inherently a very personal thing. And what's important is that you figure out just how important they are to the person that you want to be and to stop caring about the grade of the smartest person in your class. Anyone who knows me knows that I probably should care more about my grades. <laughs> but for me to care more about my grades and for me to achieve higher grades would mean cutting back on how many experiences I have outside of the classroom, the same experiences that have taught me some of the skills that we've, we're talking about today and have helped me become the person that I am today. Don't get me wrong. I do believe that grades matter. But figure out just how much they matter to you. And don't let anyone else tell you how much they should matter. That's on you to figure out. Hack number three. Let your, let your experiences guide your next. If you remember one thing from this talk, remember this. As university students, this is the best possible time for us to experiment and us to try different roles and different things. Not just to figure out what we're good at, but to figure out what we enjoy. Conveniently, here at a university, there's countless opportunities for you to get involved in a student role. Maybe you volunteer with your student government and help out at the front desk once a week, or maybe you become a residence life donor, or a residence life assistant, and help integrate first year students into their home here on campus. There's literally countless opportunities for you to get involved. All you need to do is take the first step and identify what that opportunity is that you're remotely interested in, and dive in. As you experiment with these different opportunities, you'll likely notice that one can often lead to the next. Let me give you an example. When I was in second year, I was selected to be a member of the Waterloo Orientation Planning Team. Within three months after that role ending, I ended up joining this small two-person startup. This, these two things seemed disconnected, but me diving into that role with that startup was only a remotely good idea because of the experiences I'd had helping plan orientation. Why? Because the startup was looking for someone to grow their product into education, specifically with a focus on larger, growing into larger higher ed college and university, universities around the world. Today, three years later, I'm still with that startup. I'm still growing into different, different educational markets and Every day, I'm still learning new ways of how to communicate effectively and new ways of critically thinking through different situations. Thus, let your current and your previous experiences drive the experiences you have next and never stop experimenting with how you execute the different tasks involved with each of those experiences because that's where the real value is. To summarize, if you're looking to tap into some of what our University 2.0 has to offer, it's really not that hard. 
the first thing you need to do is ask why. You need to stop comparing your grades. You need to continuously, continuously look for those experiences that can lead to the next and to never stop experimenting. In closing, I'd like to challenge you. No matter how much or how little time you have left in your university career, I'd like to challenge you to approach this traditional university experience with the goal of walking away with a little bit of what you would have had had you attended our University 2.0. Said differently, I challenge you to identify and capture some of that value that exists outside the classroom and beyond your traditional degree requirements. Do this, and I guarantee you'll reach the end of your university career and be able to say, yes, the exams and the lectures were valuable, but it's the experiences I had outside the classroom that are what give me the confidence I need to know that I'm ready to go out and make a positive impact on the world. Thank you.